and mm -hmm. that's well, that's 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 what I've become concerned about in particular. Yes. I mean, the problem with that, of course, really, is the fact that it's a bit of a two-way street. That uh, mm -hmm. we do get a lot of publicity from the uh, that part of the Islamic community as appears to hate this country and everything that goes with it. Now, I know they're a minority. Before you tell me they're an extreme minority, they very probably are. But of course, it, sometimes it's people like this that get the publicity rather than the others. So. And there are a lot of people who will not look on both sides of um, this particular argument and will not well, understand that. As I said, I am standing for adopting a neighbour from a different spiritual or political background. I would like more people to have more to do with Muslim communities within our constituency um, so that they can begin, if, particularly if they've got prejudices, they can begin to see what is true and what is false from their prejudices. Do you think that uh, the same applies to a degree in the other way around, that um, many of the more, um, uh, what's the right expression, um, not extreme, I don't mean that at all, uh, many of the more um, serious uh, Muslims, those who do really take their religion seriously, uh, might, and others as well for that matter, uh, might take a few steps more towards the Anglo-Saxon culture, if you like. I mean, at the risk of being what? called racist, which I really don't think I am, okay. on the basis that they are all either immigrants or mm -hmm. second or third or fourth generation, whatever it might be, immigrants. And I have to say, I have worked in a predominantly Asian mm -hmm. uh, society at one stage, and I've got on very well, so I don't have a problem with that. Sure. Um, so this is a question about integration. Uh, if you're asking me a question about, about integration, I start by answering what I see as the number one integration problem. And the number one integration problem I see in St. Leonard's in particular, and a little bit in Hastings, is that we have people moving into the area who are more affluent than a lot of people already living in there. They're of the same eth uh, ethnic and religious background, but with the label gentrification uh, being thrown, thrown around, what is happening is that these people are not integrating with the poorer, um, disadvantaged of people around them and that's why I would like people who come to St Leonard's in particular where I care about for its arty background to be adopting a neighbour who is uh, worse off than them. That is the integration I want to speak about in this campaign the inter and, and it is I say not across a religious or, or ethnic divide just a, just a, a privilege uh, divide and an interest divide. I mean just as a um a sort of aside almost really, um, we've had one or two accidents down in Canva recently, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago. I mean, five that was the real tragedy. Because, yes, well, indeed. it's an awful thing to happen, frankly. Yes. And I still don't quite understand how it could have happened, but mm -hmm. nonetheless it, it did. Yeah, drowning. Um, yeah. Who are all from an Asian background simply because they didn't actually understand what goes on on a British beach and the tides and the rips and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, and one could say, of course, well, why should they? They've never been there before. But uh, there was another incident prior to that, a couple of years earlier, where a lady dressed in full burqa mm -hmm. went into the sea and drowned in 18 inches of water because, of course, the whole thing got waterlogged. I was totally and unaware of that. And she got pulled under and I suppose all her clothes got tangled up. And sure, and it's hard to... And, 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 and she couldn't get above the water again. And it's hard to swim. So, so no burkas on the beach? Is that what you're proposing if you're on your what manifesto? What I'm proposing... No, uh, don't put words into my mouth. Apologies. Um, it was a slight, slightly joke. I want, I want everyone to submit a manifesto. It's my, it's, it's my job to put words in yours, not mine. <laughs> I like your sense of um, humour, Virgil. But, Thank you. Um, no, it's... When I was thinking of more of integration just now yes. and people adopting, not necessarily adopting, but understanding and perhaps coming closer mm -hmm. to an Anglo-Saxon way of life. And that, I'm sorry, it's a horrid phrase, but it's the best way I can I know what I you mean. It. Um, to stick to what would be appropriate in the country of their or their parents or their grandparents' birth. I think actually probably we don't have a problem with second or third generations. So I'm, I'm, I'm third sorry, generation. we're, we're, we're now at the point where language is totally breaking down. The word appropriate is only used where there is no clear criteria. Um, one just puts this word yeah. out and, 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 and it, it, doesn't, it doesn't take us anywhere, mm -hmm. um, I, don't, I, I don't think. Um, I think we've talked 
as much as I want to talk yeah. about issues of, of integration, you've had a couple of shots at it and I threw one back at you. Um, so um, if we haven't quite kept to what I would like mm -hmm. to keep to in discussion, which is dialogue rather than debate, where there's goodwill and cooperation, where we're not trying to pull the other down. If we can get to that st type of political um, way forward, then I feel that if I've contributed anything into, in that arena, then I've done a worthwhile job in standing you, as you, well. Um, with respect, you're being just a touch naive because the whole thing about questioning politicians or prospective politicians uh, is to give. I mean, I'm very nice actually to all the people that I've met mm -hmm. um, because I don't think that I need to do a Jeremy Paxman act, even if mm -hmm. I was capable, which I'm probably not, um, on any of our local people. But of course, you will find people who will challenge you. Sure, uh, quite yeah, a lot. I, I expect, I like I expect to be bruised. Yeah, you, know, you will not always get the questions that you like to answer, and you will be pressed to answer questions that you don't like to answer. Indeed, you've been uh, you've, you've been you've been amicable, but I, I this particular question mm -hmm. of a lady turning up on a beach, uh, on a beach holiday in full burqa. I used did I use the word appropriate? You said I did, so I probably did. Um, but it's just not a very good idea. Now, if they had I'm known an advocate a bit of more about sense. our culture yeah. than they did, they might have recognised mm. the fact that, yes, a slightly more appropriate dress that would still give them the modesty mm. that they want. Until I hear a policy proposal, I don't know how to respond to this. Well, I, it's not, I'm not in the business of making policy. Okay. Um, I just report on it. Uh, I have the easy job. I think everyone um, is in the business of making policy, and we've done for too long. We've shirked that responsibility and pushed it up to the to the politicians who've made a dog's dinner well, of it. Let me give you an example. There, I used to compete in triathlon mm -hmm. uh, until a few years ago, um, and there is a very good elite lady triathlete who comes from one of the Gulf states. And to be honest, I can't remember which one it is, mm -hmm. Dubai or one of those. I think that she comes from. She is Muslim, and she um, complies with Muslim tradition. Now, she doesn't try and compete in a burqa, but she is totally covered up from ankle to head, mm -hmm. and she's designed and developed a um, uniform, a, a track a form of dress. Or, or power to her to be able to combine both worlds. Now, you see, it can be done, mm -hmm. uh, and... She's obviously done a fair bit of research to work out exactly how she can do it in, and mm. be compatible with her religion. Um, so it can be done. And but where does this question come from? I mean, I don't know whether this is what the constituents are greatly concerned about. I mean, you happen to have a, an interest in this particular figure because of your background in triathlon. But well, no, I don't. It, it's not that at all. It's just something that happened, uh, which needn't have happened. And you've been talking about integration and getting people to know each other. Sure. And I just felt that it was not so much a question of the comfortably off getting to know the poor or the advanta advantage getting to know the disadvantage. It's also a question of general in integration with us understanding them, if I can put it like that, uh, and them, again, apologise for using that word, but it's an easy sure. one to get away yeah, with. Yeah, it's a problematic uh, actually word. Actually understanding yeah. us yeah. and some form of adjustment perhaps uh, being required. Now, because Quite a few people from both sides of the argument uh, don't adjust either ways. This gives cause mm. for conflict and also gives cause for the sort of thing that I mentioned that's just happened. Uh, so I, just, I suppose what I'm saying is, are you actually going far enough in what you're suggesting? I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for the suggestions to bubble up through um, the, the means that I have said, which is people can make films about what's in their manifesto, they can come up with the policy suggestions, and then those policy suggestions can be discussed with people of a very different policy, uh, with very different policy suggestions, and should it come to it, mediators involved in that, in, that, in that process, to help see what the way forward with these issues are. I will not ignore the issues, any issue can come forward, but I am not the person to provide the answers. The answers come from the community. I have, a, I have skills in mediation and can bring good mediators in to help the answers uh, the, or, the work, or, or the working ways through the, this to, em to, to emerge. So I'm not standing for a political party and it throws um, in interviewers. I'm standing for your constituents to have a say like they've never had a say before because we can take the political parties out of the equation. I'm directly accountable to the members of the public who 
engage in a political process by putting their manifestos forward and being willing to mediate with people with different manifestos. Well, let's assume you're right in saying that we can take the political parties out of the equation. That's the way it's going. The, the, um, the, the schisms, the schisms are so deep. Take, you can't take politics out of it. No, life is life is political. The personal is political, and we're getting into a whole generation where the interpersonal will be seen as political. That that every choice we make, from what we put on our plate to how we drive our car, has a uh, impact that is. Uh, you spoke of the of, of of the the shoe of the horse that lost the battle. It's going to be the journey to Tesco's that loses that that, that floods the, uh, the 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 rather district. This is this this is the uh, the new the new front line of politics. So, here am I sitting in uh, Rye. Um, let's say I'm reliant on public transport. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Tesco's. The nearest Tesco's either is either Hastings or it is. I mean, just as sure, important. Jensen's obviously um, is the main supermarket, but I regard it. I, so, I won't won't comment on Jensen's. Je well, you know, it's a small <laughs> shop. It has limited um, mm -hmm. choice, really. Um, mm -hmm. I think a small shop by comparison. By comparison, Stephen Jensen might think differently, but the mm -hmm. Rye Jensen's is not a particularly big supermarket. Um, now, if I wanted to go and have the choice and wanted to go to Sainsbury's or Tesco's, whatever, mm -hmm. the nearest Tesco's is either Tenterton or it is in the West um, side, Hastings. Yeah, yeah, Hastings. Now, to get from here to Tesco's in Hastings uh, by public transport mm -hmm. is going to take me well over an hour at best. I'm afraid I have to disagree. If we're talking about the Tesco's, Oh, there's a Tesco's Metro right by Hastings Station. I'm talking about Tesco's Metro. And, uh, I'm, talking, I'm not talking about Tesco's Metro. Okay. I'm talking about decent supermarket. I think there's, there's, an, there's, an, there's an obsession with consumer choice that needs to be knocked on its head. But uh, Okay. That, why, why aren't we allowed choice then? If the choice floods uh, the, the environment, then it's the responsibility of government to do something but to reduce is, that choice. choice in, how is choice flooding the environment? Uh, you're talking about taking a longer trip to get a greater choice rather than uh, do what the more responsible ecological uh, action okay. would be. So you're talking about the effort it takes to get the choice rather than the choice being available itself? I would, I like, mean, people to have I would like people to have, to, have, to have plenty of choice, of course, in their shopping, but I hope that they choose to connect more in the county for the provision of the food. I, I put a blog site together called East, uh, East Sussex Veg People. I want consumer and producer to be much more closely closely connected i want the, i want the county and the and certainly the two districts that we're talking about in particular here to be much more closely connected it's the links between people and the transport infrastructure that matters that, that matters uh, greatly to me i want I, 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 people need to know where their food comes from and if they can build a direct relationship with the farmer that's the kind of policy i particularly I particularly stand for, rather than um, some kind of um, heaven being de being defined as everyone within the region being able to go to a choice of large supermarkets um, without travelling for as long as an hour. How, how, how do you define um, the individual shopper having a close link with the farmer? Um, well, the you're, that's you, not you're, possible. The Euro European um, food cooperatives um, are, are, are a model in which a group of 50 people say we are going to contract with, with the farmers in our neighbourhood and between those 50 people they take different turns in being responsible for making each week's uh, delivery of a range of vegetables and meat and what have you uh, turning up. It's not a great burden on any one of those 50 people and it provides a wide range of foods from within the region. It needs to be explored in this area in a way in which so it the hasn't been. the 50 people are, are the customers of the yes. farmers? Yes. yes, and they get to know the, the farm and the, and the farmers mm -hmm. and they feel more connected to their environment, which is, which is, which is so needed if we're going to... We, we, need, we need to love the place where we live if we're going to actually take the effort to protect it. In theory, that's possible in Rye. But how about somebody living in central London or central Birmingham or, well, or I, Sheffield or, or somewhere? Sure, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't be standing in a constituency yeah. in, 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 in a constituency where I didn't think the things that I believed in were possible. Okay, so really, what you're saying is that would apply where where people can actually do it. But we it have a we we ha we have a beautiful um, range of uh, agriculture and um, environments. We uh, we have such. We're so wealthy in terms of 
the abundance of, uh, of this part of East, East, East Sussex. Um, and we have obvious markets for, 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 the, for those farmers, and they're not connected well enough in a personal way. It's too impersonalised with supermarkets taking a big cut, cut of money. We need to make it far more direct and meaningful and have people not just shuttling along the coast but connected inland to, var to various places and feel that Hastings, D Borough Council and Rother District Council are all one rather than they only come together for the purpose of a, of, of, of a general election. I am all about connectivity. Right. Um, I mean, the whole thing is a wonderful idea in theory, uh, but... We've got to 2066 to do it. You've got to persuade people to put a day a week aside to do 50, let's say... When they're 50, or, 50, or, when they're 50 or, or over, if they haven't sorted out their financial affairs such that they can afford five to seven hours a, a week to care for the elderly then I just wonder where their duty of social okay, responsibility so is. So they're caring for the elderly. I mean, I speak as somebody who cared for my mother for four years. So sure, and I've been doing eight years for my dad the now. The yeah. ties on, on, care, on being a carer. Indeed. Um, so they're, they're caring for the elderly. Uh, they're trying to become carbon neutral, and they're dashing around the countryside with deliveries for, so 40, 50, 60 people. What, once... Once a year, if you're in a cooperative of 50 people, you're involved in the in in in, in, the, in the distribution in a in a direct in a direct way, using their cars presumably. Um, not the their cars, the collectively collective, collectively owned vehicles, because there are too many cars on each street, and streets need to meet and say, how many cars do we need? How are we going to pay for them? What are we going to save? Oh, yippee, we're going to save a lot of money and we'll still have a car whenever we need it. We need to move away from this concept of individual ownership of everything. I call myself a lend it all man. Everything I own is yours. You can borrow anything that I, that, 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 that I theoretically possess because it's not really mine. It's just passing through me, temporary use. And I, we need to have, just have a whole different philosophy if we're going to get through these, these times of great ecological challenge. I mean, there are, of course, car... Yes, I suppose you could call them car sharing schemes at the moment, where you can join effectively a club. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned who who, who makes a profit out. Corner I'm concerned who makes a profit out of that. I think people just need to take more responsibility on a street by street basis. And for some people, it, the 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 agenda around going carbon neutral will be unaffordable, unrealistic. The unaffordability and unrealistic nature of a of a carbon neutral time scale for some people who are hard up on some streets is something that will need to be put into the political mix somewhere down the line. So my hashtag, um, Every Street Carbon Neutral 2025, is designed to create the conversations whereby we realise where this is actually going to cut and become, for some, an impossibility, look like an impossibility. We have to have the difficult conversations rather than say it's all for the government to sort out. No. Well, of course, a certain amount of it has to be for the government to sort out. I mean, we can do our bit... Um, well, we'll have a pincer action. Double, we'll do, we'll double glazing on, on how we get our heating and mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. But, but, but yes, we but are still going to need, for example, electricity. Uh -huh. Yes. Which has got to come from somewhere. Uh, yes. Now, I know renewables are growing and the, the um, investment in renewables and uh, also the experimenting with renew renewables and the general whole uh, way these things advise is, is expanding. But is it really feasible to say, OK, we can do without all our power stations, be they gas, coal, well, not really coal, they will be phased out anyway, but, uh, or nuclear or whatever, uh, by 2030, i.e. in 10 years' time, and have enough power available from uh, renewable sources to actually power the country? So, of so I'm going to rewind to before the but because the, uh, the word but often you know, negates everything that was said, but said before. You were acknowledging that uh, renewables have grown. I think, it's, I think it needs to be said far more strongly than that. No one predicted how cheap the unit cost for wind energy would, would become. It has uh, been remarkable. I think there's still something to be done in wave energy as, uh, as well. Wave energy is more reliable than, 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 than wind energy. But there are um, a different kind of conservationist concerns, and we have an interesting tension between the conserva conservationist of the bay and the um, uh, and, and the carbon uh, neutral uh, accountant 
uh, uh, approach uh, that says what matters is, is, is that figure. There well, are so many conversations leaving, to be had. Leaving aside the fact that I think you're totally wrong by saying the but negated everything that came afterwards. It was the two sides of okay. the problem. Okay, so it was an and, but, sorry. But, mm. but, now there's a but. Okay, I'm hearing um, it. You have just said there is the conversation to be had, if you like, between the environmentalists and those who actually want to see the country still being able to turn lights on, mm -hmm. so the technologists, if you want. Who is more important? I mean, we've got the seven barrier that's been argued about for years and years and years and years and years. And, years. and at the moment, the environmentalists have come out on top, partly helped by the cost of the whole thing, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but who's most important here? It's, it's, it's not the platform I'm standing on, as you'll see when the... Uh, leaflet comes through every door, um, you know, it's an A3 folded to A5 leaflet um, that comes through every door in the constituency. That has the bullet point, um, grassroots, play grassroots environmentalism, pause, pause 5G, play grassroots environmentalism, move forward more together. Which so means nothing. I, I, really? explain, I explain the process by which policy is arrived at. The poli uh, I, I, I've said it a few times, and it's a grassroots up approach to, to policy with, with all the suggestions mediated and I act upon what comes through of that process. So I don't need to have a view. I'm not a political party that needs to have a view on this, that and the other. I need to have a process by which I collect the views from the uh, constituents and break down and passes. And as, a me as someone with a strong mediation background, I think I am the person to do that and a traditional politician is not. So, if I'm to be um, possibly slightly cruel, uh, I, don't uh, mind. I could say, well, it's going to happen whether you mind it or not, but... Well, um, feel free. I could, I could say, so you have no policy, all you're saying to people is, tell me what you want to do, and then I'll make that my policy. That is the joy of having an independent MP for the constituent, that they can have more confidence that their views will be reflected in Parliament than if... Um, the person they vote for is accountable to a structure that is uh, obscure, distant and outdated as the present political parties so are. So what happens when people want things that are simply not feasible, but everybody wants it? <laughs> I want to give you an example. Please, an please, example. I, I, I prefer having well, grounded examples than abstract concepts. Right, well, you know, um, what does everyone right, want that's unfeasible? Okay, well, I'm... I'm taking an example at the moment. Okay. It's by no means everybody, yep. uh, but it's, there is a, a, a big discussion going on. It has been for quite some time about uh, transport links between Rye and everywhere else in the rest of the world, and Hastings, that matter as well. Well, sure. The, Ash the, the Ashford through to Brighton connection is one that I am. I'm going to put my neck out on that one as well, saying that uh, needs to be improved in the sense that it seems bizarre to have sections of single track where you could be held up for 15 well, minutes when the other train's running late, etc., etc. And it is not secure against the predicted levels of, uh, well, of, of sea rise. There is, there, there is certainly this. Now, I, I'm, against, um, I'm against the London connection, as the other London connections being made, made faster other than, other than that one. Yeah. No, 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 no fast route up from Hastings. So you're from, not, from, you're from, not, from, you're from not suggesting, as, as indeed Anna was trying to push, uh, when she was our MP, to have HS1 going down... No, it would take the heart uh, out of our the community. Hastings, if not... I, uh, I believe that would take the heart out of our community. The heart of our community is the people who live and work in the area, and um, they do a lot to create community cohesion, whereas the people who take advantage of a high-speed link uh, more often are adding to the increase in the cost of living in the town uh, or in, in the whole in the whole district um, whilst not being present enough to be fully contributing to the to the community you know, so the worst the worst thing you can do for um, a for for a community is often connect it um, to a metropolis uh, where there is more money we find the kind of thing that we agree on um, let's shake hands <laughs> on that <laughs> um, now, uh, 
Thinking of the rail, though, because I mean, it is an important thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, we, need, we, we, we need everybody wants yeah, sure. a better connection. I, I interview people about what they want. We yeah. need better, better rolling stock, larger trains. Sometimes where there's only a, a two, yes. I mean, the a, two, a two, two, two carriage train, unit. Particularly in the summer, it's laughable. We've got all the tourists down there, but particularly at weekends. Yeah, and, and then the, sometimes late at night, I see a twelve or fourteen or sixteen one going through. Uh, I, I think has this really been managed managed well? well I mean, I, I actually, if I go up to London to a show, for example, in the evening, mm -hmm. I can't get back until 5.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure I'll take lots of yes. railway station for five Yeah, hours. exactly. Um, yeah. But leaving that aside, mm -hmm. the, just the practicalities of it, which was the reason for my initial, original question, that people may want loads of things, mm -hmm. but what is actually, what is doable and what is not doable. I mean, somebody, I can't remember We'll find our way through said this. that politics is the art of the possible. Yes. Um, now, we need a connection which you have rightly seen through from Ashford through to Brighton, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which is reliable, mm -hmm. uh, which runs on time. Which has two lines rather than one. Which has, well, which is what would make it partially, hopefully, reliable and on time. Mm -hmm. Preferably not run by Southern or Southeastern, which would also help quite a lot. Well, I, 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 I hear a lot of people wanting renationalisation, people who are simultaneously Brexit supporters, and this has surprised me that I, I'd presumed I that... I suspect, by and large, there are people who were not around in the days of uh, British Rail and had to commute okay. on British Rail. I, 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 sen I sense we've, we've parted again in where we stand. I think going to help. Um, the trouble with... Just, sorry, I'm not going to bang on about something, but... Just I don't as, mind as what you bang thing, on well, about, we've John. Got, we've got extra... You've got the time to think about it, and it's me to get the answers from you rather than the other way around. But okay. one of the problems, of course, with nationalisation is that government has so many... Well, indeed, you can give me your view on this. The, gov the government, government has, has so, so many priorities, them, priorities, not yeah. least of which, you know, we all know what they are. I mean, it's the NHS, it's schools, it's policing, it's all this sort of stuff. Um, rail transport and one or two other things that have been suggested for nationalisation are going to come second, if not third, fourth, fifth, and maybe fiftieth. Are you asking me to second guess the order of priorities of, of government? I'm just challenging, not really, yeah, I suppose I'm challenging a view which you have indicated just now about, because you clearly are, think that nationalisation of, of the rail would be a good thing. Um, and that was what I inferred from what you were saying. What I, oh, as I say, I represent the views that come to me, and the views that come to me both include getting on with Brexit and renationalising so rail. you don't have any views of your own, these are, these are everybody else's I, I've got... These are these are other people's views. I have strong views. It would be. It, I wouldn't be an effective independent MP if I had strong views on too many issues. I am an effective potential MP, be it in this year or 2024 or or, or more realistically 2029. I'm a more effective um, MP or job share MP if I stand up for a few policies and a process by which everyone else gets their voice heard mm -hmm. than if I have an opinion on everything. Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, he told us not to, um, to, have, to be very clear where our sphere of influence is and our sphere of concern. People have got themselves into physical illness over Brexit where they have a massive area of concern and very little influence. I'm trying to give people an opportunity to have an influence in their community and build that outwards and then meet their sphere of concern. Do you not think that this is showing perhaps a lack of leadership and people actually want leadership? I have never been accused of not showing the qualities of leadership. I may be flaky from time to time, but in terms of, uh, you know, because I have a, a, a borderline bipolar health condition mm. and I call myself bipolar warrior, um, it's a hashtag amongst um, amongst others. I am forthright, and some see me as see me as arrogant. I, um, I don't know whether it's in my star sign, but apparently my star sign is the star sign of military leaders and, and commanders. And people read my little star star chart if I pass it to them and say, "Yes, that's you, Paul. Which you is, are you, you, you're, you're like that. I'm, I'm, I'm a Leo, I'm the, but I'm right, a fire okay. symbol. And someone says I'm a fire horse. In Japan, they kill the fire horses off as babies because they can't cope with the amount of turbulence they cause to the um, to the social environment. So um, I. I'm aware of my qualities and I don't think that it is lacking in leadership. It may be lacking in the skills, the interpersonal skills needed to team build effectively, mm -hmm. to raise funds effectively, you know, because this is often a question you're asked in interviews, what are your weaknesses? My weaknesses are going from 
wonderful ideas to strong teams with the funding to make it a, to make it a reality. But that's where I look to others to, instead of dismissing this guy as a naive idealist, to join forces because they can see that something has to change pretty big in politics for us to meet the challenges ahead. And that means joining with people you at first would never have imagined coming into a room and shaking hands with as we just did 10 minutes ago. Paul, thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers again, John. Thank you.